Hi, and it's me, Hither, and Michelle. Hello. Part two for this, um, if you haven't seen part one, you need to see part one, because in part one, I introduce an amazing guy called Michelle Timmerman, and you need to hear his journey, i.e. in terms of how he started his trading journey and the ups and downs he's had, and it's very impressive where he's ended up right now. So, um, what I left off on part one was, it's not just about strategy, is it? No, it's not about strategy. No. So this is something I kind of keep saying to people over and over and over, and they probably hear it till they're like, you know, they're like, yes, we heard it. But it's so important because the question I ask all my students, and if you have watched video part, part one, you'll hear, you've, you've heard me say this already, but I always ask my students, what's the hardest thing you've been through? And when I asked Michelle this, this is the answer he came up with, okay? So this is why I ask it, because when you hear a question like this, and when you, when you hear the answer to this question, you'll be like, okay, I, what's going on in my head at that point is, have they got what it takes to deal with the downside of, of Forex? Because Forex is one of those very testing industries where they're, it's going to absolutely annihilate you. So if you haven't got what it takes, you are not going to make it. So I don't want my students in the future to, um, to be in you know, any kind of misconception that this is easy. It's not easy, is it? It's not. It will make you more money than you'll ever hopefully make in anything else if you do it right and if you've got big funds to play with, etc. But, and the transformation from it is unbelievable and it will affect all areas of your life. But it can't happen for everyone because I think you have to have had to go through hell and back. Um, because then I know you've got the building blocks to bring yourself back together again. So Michelle's story has been amazing and I'm just going to have to hand over to him because when I asked him this question, this was the answer. So Michelle, tell us your story. Well, um, the hardest thing that I've had to do in my life was, uh, was probably in, there are quite a few things, but the one that always um, comes to my mind was in 1994, I was, um, I was in Rwanda which is uh, uh, in the middle of Africa. And if you remember 1994, for those who were, who were born at that time, um, there was a genocide in Rwanda. Yeah. So um, a million people lost their lives um, within three months. Yeah. In intense. a country that had uh, less than seven million people as a population, so it's more than one uh, out of seven people. Yeah. So uh, pretty much every single person, every single family was affected. Yeah. So it was it was a disaster for everyone. And um, when it started, um, I was in the capital of the country with my cousins, mm -hmm. and we had no one. We had no adults with us. So my cousin had lost their parents, and my mother was 200 kilometers away from where we were. Okay. So the hardest thing I've had to do was to take 20 people and walk night, pretty much night only avoiding roadblocks every 100 meters of people with machetes and machine guns who definitely didn't want us alive and we had to do that 200 kilometers on foot. Okay. Um, I had 20 people with me, I only lost two of them, which I think was, it was a blessing because none of us, um, it's, it's really a long shot that yeah. I mean, this sounds unreal for everyone living in the UK, especially. I mean, obviously, this is international, so you can see all this anywhere. But very few people will really understand what it means. You lost two people. You say it casually, but that means, yeah, you saw two people got shot dead, or how did they? Well, during, during that journey of 200 kilometers, uh, myself, with my own eyes, I probably saw 10,000 people dead. Wow. within that journey that we did. Um, so the fact that out of the 20 people that we started the journey with, only two of them didn't make it yeah. to the end, for us that was a massive achievement. And actually, one of them, we lost, we lost the first person on the first day, and we lost the last person on the last day of okay. the three months. So within that three month period, um, we were all, um, we were all alive, basically, we were all well. Yeah. So, it, it was a crazy period, it was... Um, so it's like rebels versus... It was rebels, basically the... What happened is that the president of the country had been shot down in his airplane, so... 
um, assassinated, assassinated, you know, by rebels, I assume? No one knows until no one. today okay. who shot the missile um, that came down the plane. Wow. Um, so then you had two parties, rebels versus... You had rebels who were, who were coming from um, outside of the country and you had the existing leading uh, caste who were trying to to keep things into their own uh, hands. So they were basically killing anyone who they thought uh, would be supporting the rebels Robert. coming from outside. And the problem is that Michelle was walking through this every night, uh, how many miles? Two kilometers, okay, yeah. kilometers. But ultimately, the, the, the risk is that everyone thought he was rebel, like a yeah. rebel, um, the government army. I definitely had the wrong physique, so. <laughs> yeah, because I it was, was too they, tall to. Okay. I was too tall and my face and my physique was definitely the wrong one to to be able to make it. Wow, okay. Actually, my entire family, wow. pretty much. So, it, it was really a challenge. So um, how did you get out of that? So tell us about your last day and how you managed to get, because you were that close from the border of getting out. Where were you trying to get to? We were trying to get into Burundi, Burundi which was question. a neighboring country. So. Within, within about a month, we arrived at the, uh, at the, uh, at the border with Burundi. And uh, when we arrived at the border, just as we were about to cross, we realized that the army had already crossed, they were on the other side, and they were throwing back everyone into the river. So wow. then we had to go back and try now and find another place to hide. Okay. Within, but but by, by going back into the country where we knew things were not safe either. Yeah. So the. I think one of um, w one of the stories I, I, I mentioned to you was um, was when I met some uh, presidential guard soldiers yeah. who, and, and that's actually the reason why I always carry a lighter with me, even though I, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I always have a lighter with me simply because a lighter that they saved my life. Yeah. So. Um, I'll just briefly say what happened. Basically, yeah. is. I was walking towards a roadblock which was known to be, you could not pass it without the right ID, without the right physique, without actually someone pretty much um, chaperoning you through that roadblock. It was almost impossible. Yeah. And just as I was walking towards it and contemplating um, that, well, that was probably the end for me. Wow, so knowing that this could be the last moment yes. that you see yourself alive yes. or you know you're going to possibly not make it. That's and I knew a pretty my cousins, I, I knew my cousins were 50 meters away behind that roadblock. Wow. But I knew I was probably not going to pass it. And just as I was uh, getting close to it, so I could see it about a hundred meters away. How did you feel? Away, like, was that something you were, were you trembling? Were well, you... that's something, anytime I, um, when I usually tend to face frightening situations like that, um, weirdly enough, my heart doesn't beat fast straight away. So you naturally just like... I naturally... That's how I'm built. I don't know if that's how it's everyone It's not common, is, <laughs> that's for sure, because not, most people would be, you know, going crazy about this. No, point. my blood tends to stay cold okay. until the danger has disappeared. And then it just kind of... I just go... Right. And I liberate myself okay. at that moment. But being afraid of a situation doesn't help me. So it's like my brain shuts down, so, oh my shuts gosh, down the fear. That's amazing. That, I wish we could put that <laughs> characteristic in a bottle and like give it to people and drink it and make it possible for everyone to have that because he can deal with fear so much. And this is one of the biggest factors in making it in trading because fear and greed are the two emotions that are going to kill you. Fear, in fact, is the biggest one in my opinion. Um, well, a mixture of both. but. People are scared to see losses, they will do, when they are scared of making, so let's bring it back into a forex context, when, when you can't control fear, what happens is when you see a loss, you go crazy and you start taking silly trades, you start blowing accounts, you start doing stupid things and I've seen professional traders who have been trading for years still be a victim of fear. So emotional hand, like emotional management is, is a very big factor. Having your mindset right, emotional management, how to deal with fear is a very big thing. And so Michelle's story of how we dealt with fear, like if anyone, I, I can't even visualize myself in this situation because it seems so terrifying. But I'm sure, you know, if we had to do it, God knows what would happen. But 
So what happened? You had a situation where the, the, the uh, army was trying yeah. to... Well, so yeah, they the were there. The roadblock is in front of yeah. me. And not only that, but in two presidential guard soldiers who were known to be ruthless. These guys were really the worst. And they carried these little Uzi machine guns, which right. um, they were the cutest, smallest gun, but everyone was scared of those because we knew that these guys would basically simply just shoot you, not even ask, not even ask you your ID. They would just simply just shoot you in the head. Oh, totally. Yeah. So they, they were starting to come towards me and then about 10 meters away from me, one of, the, one of the two soldiers started laughing. So he started laughing almost uncontrollably. And then he came to me, he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, how, how could someone like you make it to here? Right. How did you fool all my brothers and you made it to here? Come on, come with me. And he took me below the road to basically shoot me in the head. Wow. So the two people I was with continued their journey and they went to tell my my cousins I was dead. Oh, so wow. okay. The, the soldier takes me um, just next to the road uh, where there were plenty of bodies lying there and he cocked his gun to put a bullet into the chamber and just as he was doing that he a grenade which was on his belt fell on the floor. Wow, okay. When the grenade fell on the floor it was about six o'clock in Rwanda and six o'clock in, in Rwanda it starts to become a bit dark. Yeah. So he couldn't, he couldn't find his grenade for a couple of seconds. So he went down to the floor and started touching the grass to find his grenade. Yeah. Now, within that moment, it, for me, it, it sounded like an eternity. When you think it could be your last moments, uh, those three seconds for me lasted like an eternity. I pretty much considered every single thing that was possible at the time. Should I run? Should I try and wrestle with Russian, him? Yeah. I knew I had no chance in any of those. Yeah. But I had a lighter in my pocket. So I thought, I took my lighter out of my pocket and I shone him the light so that he can find his grenade. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so... What was his reaction? His reaction is, first of all, he saw this light in his face and he looked at me and he just couldn't understand why I would do that. So You're helping found, him in a way. He, he, yes. Yeah. Oh, I was definitely helping him. Yeah. So then he picked up his grenade and then he looked in my face and he said, he looked at me for about 10 seconds and then he said, what's, the, what's in that bag anyway? He had a rucksack. Oh. I had a rucksack. Yeah. So said, what's in that bag anyway? And I said, oh, in this bag there is um, a small little keyboard and a picture of our, of our beloved president who just got assassinated by these ruthless killers, as you know. And he said, if you show me a picture of my mom, I'll let you go. But not only will I let you go, I'll take you past the roadblock. And when he says my mom, that's how they refer to the president because they were so devoted to the president, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So for them, it was almost like a mother figure. Yeah. Without him, there would be nothing. Yeah. Because he gave them life. He gave them everything. Yeah. And so, and he started crying. So then I went into my rucksack and I took this framed picture of the president. It was a 60 by 40 picture, 60 centimeters by 40. And it was in a frame, the president with all his army, like, gear. army, yeah. army gear and everything. And, and, and I saw this, this, this man taking the picture and crying for about 30 seconds. Oh, wow. And then he said, I don't care who you are or where you came from. I'll take you wherever you want to go. Wow. And he took me past the roadblock. We arrived at the roadblock. They said, who is this guy? Leave him here. And he said, no. I'll really? take him. I'm taking him somewhere. Yeah. And he took me to my cousins. That is amazing. I mean, that, if that story doesn't make you think, what the hell? I haven't gone through anything in my life. Then, you know, because in comparison, that completely dwarfs anything that I feel like I've gone through. Or I'm sure you guys, unless you've gone through hell, like more than that, it's very rare. It's, it's something like that that really makes me think, wow, this guy I've got a lot of respect for. Why? Because now that he's gone through that, his mindset's a whole different level. And I always ask my students, what's the hardest thing you've gone through? Because I need to know, you know, you've, you've been able to build yourself, you've been able to compose yourself, and you've been broken, and then you've come back again, and you're succeeding. Because once you go through that comfort zone, i.e. completely thrown out, you found yourself 
and managed to hold yourself and create a life out of your, yep. your circumstances, and he's not had it easy. So, what would you tell people when it comes to mindset, and how important is it to perceive when they see problems in their life? How do they? Uh, how should they deal with it? Well, I think when when life throws a problem at you, it's it's basically life giving you a chance to grow. Yeah. Because any problem you pass, yeah. you become bigger than it. Yes. So that's not a problem for you anymore going forward. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how I take um, how I take life on a daily basis. So how easy was Forex in comparison? Was it anywhere near, like on a scale of 1 to 10, that was probably 10 out of 10, like madness. How easy was Forex in comparison? <laughs> I a think lot. Forex is the most difficult thing I've ever done. Because as but I was you saying, didn't you can't be more scared than have someone trying to shoot you. But it's their fault. Yeah. It's their fault. I can blame them. Okay. If I'm doing forex, I can't blame anyone else. Okay, great. But <laughs> how did that experience help you in forex? That experience um, and many other experiences like it, yeah. um, I think, are what make me go through forex. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I would be um, afraid of taking risk. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that um, I know what risk is, yeah. I know what's really risky. You can handle risk, <laughs> can't you? You've gone through a lot of risky situations. I know what risky is, so um, as long as I can manage it, mm -hmm. manage the risk, yeah. I don't feel like it's dangerous. Yeah. There's That's nothing dangerous. Amazing. So this is the, the reason I wanted to capture this in uh, part two of this, you know, this is part two of the video of Michelle. Watch part one if you haven't is because really I want you to fully evaluate what's going on in here and I want you all to look back at the tougher thing, the toughest thing you've ever been through and think of it as a blessing in disguise like how Michelle has perceived his problems and literally take that as a reason why you would be good because if you've gone through hell and back I like it unfortunately for for the situation that we're in in Forex I know that you've got what it takes he's definitely got what it takes that's why he's on a very successful journey with Forex and you know there's more in the pipeline with him and I hope we can follow your story in the future because this is only the beginning watch what we're going to do next and watch how he plays with big money hopefully so you know this is only the start and he's been amazing so it's been inspiring to me I'm sure it's inspired so many millions out there so we just want to make sure that take it seriously I really enjoy uh, the experience of Forex if you can and um, see how it transforms your life. And if you know what, if you need to know what it takes, then watch this video and think, yeah, this is what it needs from me. Okay. So I want to say goodbye, Michelle. Goodbye. Yeah. See you soon. Bye.